Hi, my name's Nick, and welcome to this short video on uh, reading a rhythm strip. Uh, rhythm strips are at the bottom of most ECGs these days, and they're also the strips that we tend to get printed off from monitors and defibrillators. When reading a rhythm strip, we tend to look at lead two, though the principle does apply to any lead. To analyse the rhythm strip, just ask yourself a few questions. There are several ways of calculating this. My personal way, assuming that the ECG doesn't tell you, is to divide 300 by the number of large squares between two adjacent R waves. Or, if the rhythm appears irregular, the number of R waves that occur between 30 large squares and multiply by 10. Sometimes it's obvious just by eyeballing the rhythm strip, but one of the quickest ways to see more accurately is to take a piece of paper and mark the peak of several consecutive R waves on it. Then move the paper along a few R waves and see if they still line up. If they do, then the rhythm is regular. If they don't, then the rhythm is irregular, and you need to see if there is a pattern to this irregularity or whether it's truly irregular. QRS complex should be less than 0.2 of a second or three small squares. Anything over this can be defined as broad. This will be due to a conduction problem, the electrical impulse finding the route via the normal fast moving bundles blocked and having to go down a back route, of or because the impulse originates in the ventricles, such as ventricular tachycardia. Absence of discernible P waves with an irregular QRS complex is almost certainly going to be atrial fibrillation. Where the atria are firing rapidly and randomly, and the AV node gets overwhelmed and only allows some impulses through. An apparent absence of P waves with a narrow complex tachycardia could be supraventricular tachycardia. A sawtooth shape to the P wave may indicate atrial flutter. In atrial flutter, the SA node is firing at around 300 beats per minute. The AV node, concerned about letting so many impulses through and upsetting the poor ventricles, only lets through every other impulse, or every third impulse, or every fourth impulse. This usually means that flutter gives fairly predictable rates of 150, 100, or 75 beats per minute. Normally, there should be a P wave before every QRS complex. The gap between the beginning of the P wave and the start of the QRS complex, the PR interval, should not be greater than 0.2 seconds or five small squares. A regular prolonged gap of more than 0.2 seconds would mean that the AV node is holding onto the impulse for a little too long, and this causes first degree heart block. Second degree heart block can be split into two types. Mobitz 1, which is also called Wenkeback, is defined by a progressively lengthening PR interval before dropping a QRS complex completely and resetting itself for the process to begin again. Mobitz 2 rather boringly doesn't have another name. It's defined by a dropped QRS complex with an otherwise regular PR interval. It can be in a pattern or sometimes it can just be completely random. Third degree, complete or AV block is even more serious. Here there's this total disassociation between the P waves and the QRS complexes. The impulse keeps going from the atria, but the AV node is on strike. Because the ventricles sit waiting for an impulse, if they don't get one, they assume their lines of communication have been cut off, and eventually they fire. This is an escape rhythm, an emergency plan just to keep things going. It's difficult to interpret the ST segment of a single lead, and therefore we'll look at this in a later lesson. So there's the basics of the rhythm strip. In future lessons, we will try to tackle the evils of the 12 lead ECG. Thank you for listening.